a couple of times in my uh, live stream chat, I've heard from other artists uh, how they feel super overwhelmed when they browse Instagram, Twitter, and ArtStation, and they see just endless seas of artists who are way more skilled than they are, usually younger than they are, and they just feel like they can't compete with this. Like they can't, uh, they, they just don't see any point to being an artist or trying to break into the industry if this is what they're up against. And uh, I've had a, I've had some time to think about this, and I have a, a few possible solutions for this. Before I get into those, um, I want to remind you to sign up for my mailing list down below. The uh, link is in the description. Uh, when I'm going to launch my graphic novel Wyatt on Indiegogo, I will send a alert out to my mailing list, and everybody who's on that mailing list will be the first to hear about it uh, ahead of time before everybody on social media. Anyways, so uh, my solutions for this. The first one, I call it visual fasting. I know that that sounds like some kind of Silicon Valley bug man kind of buzzword speak or whatever, but hear me out on it. I think that uh, we weren't really meant to take in as much visual information as we have access to, uh, thanks to high-speed internet. Like, I remember what it was like growing up on dial-up internet uh, out in the middle of nowhere because there were no, you know, there was no cable, there was no uh, cellular service or anything like that. So I was only able to browse a few galleries a day thanks to, you know, this slow, crappy AOL connection that I was on. So I had to be really uh, specific about where I was looking for inspiration. And I think that that helped me uh, be really targeted in what I wanted to improve on at an early age. And unfortunately, a lot of artists now don't really have that. We have access to everything, which is I mean, it can be a good thing, but it's kind of a Faustian pact um, because we have access to so much information. It's just completely overwhelming and almost paralyzing if you subject yourself to the full fire hose of it. So what I would say you should do is deliberately limit all uh, the kind of art that you're exposed to. Like there's, a, there's always going to be stuff out there that inspires you. Um, but if you're just viewing it constantly and constantly, um, you're just you're probably going to be reminded of all the stuff that you're not yet able to do as good as these other artists. And so what you might need to do is, is be really intentional and targeted about what you do view. A good way to do this is just pick a small handful of artists that you are really inspired by. Uh, who do not make you feel intimidated or despaired or or competitive against. Uh, a good way to do this is maybe, I don't know, like pick some older artists who are just like really way out of your league or dead artists or, I don't know, or people who are in a, a different specialty than what you're interested in doing. I find that that, that kind of arm's length removal of, uh, that, that sort of distance helps to make them a little bit more uh, low baggage to look at and to take inspiration from. Like in my case, Mike Magnola is my guy that I always look to for inspiration. Um, I don't think for a minute that uh, I'll ever be able to compete with him. Uh, so when I look at his stuff, it's not really you know intimidating or causes me to freak out or feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not as good as Mike Mignola. I'm never going to make it in comics. You know, I, I don't, I don't have to deal with that. Um, another thing is, and th this is, uh, this was told to me by Matt Rhodes, who's a, he's an old friend. Uh, a lot of you would recognize him from uh, being the art director over at Bioware. He was the guy who, you know, designed Mass Effect and Dragon Age and all that stuff. And one of the ways he came, he overcame, uh, a similar kind of burnout or dis visual or inspirational despair was assessing what his own strengths were that nobody else could have. Um, and what, you know, you looking deep into yourself and realizing like, okay, I have this set of real life experiences that nobody else has had this combination of events and things that makes me, me, what kind of story can I tell with that? whether that's written or visual or both. Um, and once you, 
once you're able to assess that, you're able to uh, feel like your work is a little bit less vulnerable to competition out there, whether that's real or imagined competition. I think a lot of it is imagined, honestly, because to be honest, like a lot of the people that you feel like you're competing against are probably every bit as terrified and uncertain about their work as you are. Um, every, everybody's naked. We're all just, we're completely nude running around, um, in this, in this artistic wasteland. And, uh, anyways, yeah. So you need to, uh, one, figure out what kind of story it is that you can tell that nobody else can tell. You have to dig deep within your own personal experiences, your own beliefs, your own fears, your own loves, your hopes and dreams and what have you. And don't be afraid to use common visual tropes, common storytelling tropes to tell that story. Because even if you take common things that are already kind of out there in the artistic world online, whether you're just a hobbyist doing it for fun or you're somebody who wants to go professional, if you're able to take those common things and combine them with your own uncommon experience and uncommon identity and self, you will be able to tell a story, uh, whether that's visual or written or both, that nobody else will be able to. You might not be the most technically skilled artist out there. You're like You might not be as good as you know so-and-so who just graduated from Art Center or who's been drawing since you know, they were in the womb or whatever. But the thing that will set your work apart from people who are even technically better than you will be the fact that you are telling some kind of story with it that nobody else can tell. And that, re- that requires a little bit of vulnerability, I guess. You have to be willing to, you know, reveal uh, a little bit of your your heart. Uh, but if you can get past that, get past the initial fear that that entails, uh, I think you'll come out the other side uh, a lot stronger, a lot more confident. Anyways, hope this video helps somebody out out there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll respond to each and every one of you as best as I can. And uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, check me out on social media, and I'll see you all around next time.